Hi, I'm Ash from Hidden Sunk Games. Today we're going to be taking a look at another classic. This time we're going to be looking at Hero Quest. Now what we're going to do in this video, we're going to have a little unboxing, see what's inside here, and then I'm going to very briefly go through the rules, how to play this game, followed by a review of what I think. Let's get started. All right, so this is Hero Quest. Um, as you can see, it's a fantastic looking box. I love the scenery on this. Really, really cool. Let's take the lid off and have a quick look at what's inside. Okay, so standard rule book, very handy. This is your quest book. So let's have a little flick through of this. Bit of an intro kind of story there. And this is what your uh, your map will look like. This is what uh, the evil wizard player, he's the only character that will see this and he's responsible for setting up the board. Get a bit of an intro text there and any notes. Um, and this book is full of different quests uh, for you to work through, including that, a little blank bit on the middle for you to uh, make your own quests up. The evil wizard player, who's played by one person, gets this little screen as well, which apart from looking really cool, um, can hide some of their, um, their items behind it. Um, and it's a nice little reference uh, chart on the back. And let's take out the board. I'll show you this. Now the board, of course, going back to that quest book there. So the board is pretty blank. Um, it's a bird's eye view, basically, of a dungeon. And if we look back at the quest book, you can see that it matches, so the evil wizard player knows exactly what character pieces are where, where the doors are, where the enemies are, where the players start from. So that's the board, very simple, some nice detail on there. Um, and let's just quickly run through some of the pieces you get. There's a lot going on in this box. As you can see, we've got a character sheet for each of the hero players. Uh, there's four uh, hero players. There's the elf, the wizard, the dwarf, and the barbarian. And each of these cards the character gets, it tells you a bit about them. Uh, we've got some cards at the back here. We've got your, uh, your baddie cards, which the evil wizard is in control of. These are all the bad guy cards. Orc, Gargoyle, Chaos Warrior. That's cool. Goblin. Um, and then we've got uh, equipment cards. We've got... Uh, magic cards and we've also got treasure. I'm not going to delve uh, too much into into those in this uh, video nor am I going to go too much into magic but you've got earth, fire, water um, and air so lots of cool stuff there. We've got combat dice, we've got regular uh, moving dice um, and of course lots of items in here. We've got doors, closed doors, open doors, um, treasure chests, um, kind of cases and cabinets, bookshelves, uh, desks, a little skull on there. And then, of course, your characters. You've got uh, zombies. These, of course, some of them are painted. I picked this up off eBay, so whoever I got this from kind of had a little go at painting some of them. There's one of the heroes, the dwarf and the barbarian. Uh, there's the big gargoyle. Um, and there's a few more in there. Uh, nice fireplace there. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Anyway, let's um, let me get the board set up, and I'll show you how Hero Quest starts. Okay, so this is how the board would start on an average quest. Now, for this example, I'm using quest number two in the book, which is called the Rescue of Sir Ragnar. Basically, you have to find Sir Ragnar um, and rescue him. Now, if you see the way I've set this board up, I've got the staircase tile of you entering the dungeon there, and I've got a closed door here. And that basically is what the evil wizard does to start the game, always with that stair um, tile. On that stair tile, that's where your characters start. So, for this example, let's, um, let's pretend that I'm the elf. I will put myself on this tile, and what I'll do, I'll get my elf uh, elf character card there, um, and as you can see through this, I've got um, a series of descriptions on what I can do. The important thing on this is this bit, body six points, um, and that's kind of really all we're going to go through this time. I don't want the rules to be too overly complicated, but basically I have six health points. If I reach zero, I die. 
So for all the characters that you play with, they would each get one of these cards and you get a character sheet as well. On the body, you put six, and as the game goes on, the more you fight, um, the more you could lose or, or even gain life. So I would write six there to match that, um, and as I fight, that would go up or down. Moving around the board, um, it's simply with two dice, rolling. Um, now, let's say, um, as I said, we start off just with this room here. The game works on a line of sight, so that is all the elf can see. Once I go through this door here, the evil wizard would refer to the map and he would stop the elf there. He wouldn't let him go any further because if we look along this corridor here, um, he would be able to see a bad guy. Line of sight, remember? So we would put the bad guy, which in this incidence is a uh, goblin. Um, he would put him there. The icon would relate to that. He wouldn't be able to see around the corners here. So even though there's a door on this square there, we wouldn't put that down. The elf would need to go down there and explore there. Um, let's fast forward to them kind of having a little fight. Um, now the elf, uh, let's go to his character card again. He attacks with two combat dice um, and the goblin, I have his character card here, he attacks with two and he defends with one. So if I'm the elf attacking, I would roll two of these. These skulls there mean they are two hits, which means I've actually killed that goblin because he can only defend with one. And what the goblin would have had to have got is this uh, bad guy shield there. This is what the good guy shield looks like, um, the bad guy shield. Now, I, even if I did roll that because I only rolled one, um, he would die because his body for the goblin is only one. So he would die. If the roll was reversed and I was the goblin attacking, I would roll two dice again. Um, and again, I've got two hits. Let's go to the elf character card. He defends with two. So it's exactly the same. Um, and I got two shields, so I got no damage for that. If I had rolled, say, I don't know, um, two attacking skulls again, I would have lost two body points, okay? I would have needed to have rolled um, two of these shields or one. That would mean that I stopped one of the hits, but the other one got through. So I would go from six body points down to one. Um, that's a little run through of the combat. As a bad guy, the other thing this card has, the goblin card, is how many squares you can move. The enemies in this game do not have to roll dice. They look at the character card. The evil wizard would do this, and that is how many squares they would move. They can move them all or partly. Now, let's fast forward um, and get a bit more in-depth into that first quest. Okay, so we're back, and as you can see, this board is now much more interesting than when we started. And this is what I mean. You start off in this room here, you can only see what happens in this room here. As you explore the board, um, as you can see more through the line of sight, more becomes visible. Now what I've done, I've got all four characters down on this board. We've got the barbarian over here. We've got the wizard here guarding um, where you need to return to. Uh, the elf is there um, and the dwarf in red just at the back there. I've put all the bad guys down for this quest. I've put every bit of treasure down. So you've got treasure there, treasure over here, all the doors, the tables, um, even this a cool bookshelf which goes here. And if we refer briefly just back to that quest book, you'll see that it all matches. You've got the shelves there, table up the top, all the doors, all the piles of rock, which basically are blocking your way. So all these areas of the board you can't get to, you can't go up there, you can't go past there. So that kind of cordons off the board. Some of the further quests open up a lot more than this using the whole area. Um, there is a hell of a lot going on here and that's what's really, really fun about this game. Now the uh, goal of this game is to find Sir Ragnar. Now looking at this map just for the last time here, the evil wizard knows Sir Ragnar is here. None of the other characters do. Um, and funny enough, he, it's, you know, it's quite hard to find because this little icon here, which I've put a tile down, is for a secret door. And that's another thing that this game does. Um, you have to search either for treasure, um, for traps, um, or for uh, hidden passages, secret doors like that. So the elf would have had to have searched for that door for it to um, appear, okay? Now, Sir Ragnar is in here. And when you find Sir Ragnar, he is represented by the evil sorcerer character, 
which trust me, in future quests, this guy is not one to be messed with. But for this one, um, he is your uh, Sir Ragnar. So the uh, the elf would kind of come in here, hopefully beat off that guy. Oh, he's dead. Um, go in this room and find Sir Ragnar. And then I need to escape with Sir Ragnar, who gets his own uh, number of moves that he can do all the way back to the staircase. So this is kind of a rescue mission. Get in and get out. Now, if he gets back to the staircase, then this mission is success. Um, so again, you know, there's a lot more going on here. If you're playing this game with four players, you know, you can each discuss amongst you which areas to go off to, which doors, which rooms to explore. If you're in with just one player, like how I started off, even this beginning quest can be quite challenging. Anyway, what are my thoughts on Hero Quest? I'm going to tell you. Okay, let's start with how Hero Quest looks. Um, those of you familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, you're probably seeing a lot of the similarities here from the Evil Wizard screen to kind of the way I was talking about quests. There are similarities, but Hero Quest certainly is its own game. I love the way the pieces look. I love the way the character cards and the character sheets are. Um, the quality is there. The board looks absolutely fantastic. There's some really nice detailing on here. There's some bones and some skulls just um, loitered around the board. Really, really cool. And I love the way that the pieces, when you explore the game, they just pop up. You've got doors here. You know, cool things like this, bookshelves and little treasure chests. I think the game looks absolutely fantastic. In terms of the way it plays, I believe this game was really ahead of its time. I think it came out in the early 90s. And for me, this game really kind of took my board game playing to the next level. It made me a bit more, um, I don't know, clued up on gaming. It was a little bit more complex, considering I was a kid when I played this. So it was definitely you know, step up from Kaplunk and, and Buckaroo and, and, and things like that. Um, and it certainly has paved the way for me playing games now, such as Space Hulk and Warhammer. And it really helps me learn how to play those games. So if you're a family thinking about getting your kid one of those games, don't overlook Hero Quest. You can pick it up on the cheap um, and it, it paves the way nicely for that. Um, the way it plays, it's all about exploring. You know, your heroes in this dungeon, you've got to explore it. And that's where this game comes into its own. I love the fact that you start off just with one room and one door. And then from there, you don't know. Only the evil wizard knows kind of what where the map is and where, where it's going. You, it's up to you to explore. If you play with one character, this game can be quite challenging because some of those maps certainly can be bigger than this one we've used as, as an example. Um, so with one character, it can be very tough. If there's four of you though, four heroes, that's when this game really is something special. You can each take an area of the map, of the board. Uh, one of you can guard a corridor, you can work as a team, you can stick together, you can maybe drift off. Um, that's where this game really does become fun. Um, and even then, it can still be challenging. Um, I love it. I think the combat system, again, because we're, we're talking about an entry-level kind of um, game here, kind of one of these, even though it's not a Games Workshop uh, game, you know, it is kind of an entry-level game like this. So, of course, the combat system and the defense system is going to be simple. Um, I think that's a good thing. Um, in a way, it is kind of its flaw, though, because it's very unforgiving. Um, I said in my example, the, the elf starts with, uh, with six in body, and straight away, you, you can lose two, three, just with, like, one enemy. And then, you know, that, that's only just getting out the door and fighting one or two guys. So it can be unforgiving. Um, and like I say, if there's more of you, there's more chance of survival. Um, this game made a, a big impression of me, uh, for me when I was a kid. I absolutely love it. I still play it to this day. It really helped take... Um, just the, the sense of adventure in games with me it made, it made a real impression that I have to this day and that I'll probably never forget, to be honest, all because of this one game, Hero Quest. Is it a hit? Of course it is. Go get it.